you know, I've got to learn to, to uh, start editing because I, I the last I just did this like 22 minute video and I realized I was you know ranting and raving about like lizard people type of stuff and I was like, oh, that's not going to make it past the filters. I'm going to get uh, get in trouble with YouTube. It's like I could just edit that out if I, but no, I'm doing it on a little Samsung, so there's no editing involved. Plus, I played some of this clip. I don't know. I don't know how much of this uh, this clip you can play of this chick spurging out, even at uh, quarter speed. Before um, they they're probably striking every channel that possibly deals with this. Click the links for Odyssey, BitChute, Discord, Telegram. Sorry, I did just kick somebody out of Discord <laughs> because they posted cringe, and I I just it was a gut reaction, but they came back, and I apologize for that. Uh, or to support the channel by joining Channel Four, as little as ninety nine cents a month, you will get a uh, a little shiny icon that will, uh, I don't know, light up in the, the live streams and in the comment section. Or support channel the various other links, coffee or Subscribestar. There are other videos that are going to be put on Subscribestar, but if you support the channel through one of the various other links, I will uh, give you a link to that stuff. So, um, Jeremy Hamblin, The Quartering, and Frosk. In this, in this equation, they're on the same side. I mean, and really... Uh, as I'll explain, you could put like Monday and Matt, Matt Jarbo and Ethan Klein kind of on that same side too. Versus the non soy boys um, of Comic Skate, Yellow Flash, uh, uh, EVS, uh, JDA. You know, the, there's like the Comic Skate um, fandom menace, but there's a spectrum of us within those Venn diagrams, a spectrum across, I don't know, I'm mixing metaphors here, but you know, there's, you know what I'm talking about. There's people in CG. I'm more familiar with CG who are all over the spectrum, including some people who are left to center, which is fine. Um, cause even left to center people are, are really, they look at SGW comics, which is what kind of started the whole thing of CG. And they're just not into that. Like they don't want, they don't want right of center comics. And to be fair, most people don't want right of center comics because they just won't, don't want, heavy, heavy political comics. So there's there's a spectrum of people here. But what you're learning about with the Jeremy Hambleys and all these people is that where they fit on the spectrum, and they're also kind of uh, easily pushed by social pressure, especially somebody like Hambley, he's making so much money off of YouTube, he's not going to do anything to screw that up. Hey, and no shade for that, I, I get it. But you also have to have some principles and some dogma. It's it's kind of a disappointment when you know, you've loosely followed people for like five or six years on YouTube and you learn that like there's nothing there. It's just there's an empty shell. And, and like there's a lot of people in Comicsgate who have gotten some criticism, but they're not empty shells. They, act, they do have some core dogma and they will stand for and they will stick their neck out a little bit to stand for something. Where, and then you look at like Jeremy Hambly who's making so much money. It's like, oh, he'll just do whatever he's told. Like, oh, oh. He does drink a lot, and I don't know, sometimes in wine is truth. He'll let some things slide. Anyway, so uh, finding out that the quartering is basically Matt Jarbo, uh, there are these 2015 YouTube vibers who are left-wing. The quartering is a left-wing guy, even though the left-wing doesn't understand that, because, I mean, when you're so far left, everyone at the right of Stalin is going to be the corporal. But he knows how to monetize both sides, and he's made millions of dollars providing entertainment, and infotainment, which is what 90% of YouTube is. It's just entertainment. And I will say in the past couple of years, it's, YouTube has gotten a lot worse. It used to be, like, there used to be actual news and political content on YouTube that mattered. And in the past two years, that's all gone. It's all on Odyssey now or on the various other platforms. But Odyssey kind of feels like it's the flagship platform going forward. Odyssey, Gab, and Telegram, I think I would say, are the, the three best platforms. So center left, uh, Jarbo, uh, Matt Jarbo, Jeremy Hambly. They can be pushed any way the wind blows. And to be fair, there are guys that I won't name. I mean, I've named them before. I won't get into it now. Who are center right in Comics Gate and even uh, Phantom Menace. But they're very scared of the left because they've got financial interests in maintaining the YouTube platform. You know, no shade for that either. And they don't want to get canceled. So they've got a tendency to kind of sell out anyone who is a millimeter to the right. Instead of, like, the best thing to do is you don't have to sell people out. You just withhold judgment and keep gathering information. You don't have to jump into every fray. You don't have to comment on every hot topic. So Frost is not important. 
The guy who hired Frost is important. She's just a useful idiot puppet. She's not the one who's making the moves. She's like a pit bull eating a child. That's what pit bulls are supposed to do. The real question is who let the pit bull loose in the orphanage in the first place? G4TV needed to manipulate the cattle to get some eyeballs on the channel, and that is exactly what they did. For all I know, Frosk didn't even write that rant, which is sort of funny to imagine that some guy behind the scenes was writing how not bangable she is, which is definitely true, but it'd be funny if you found out, oh yeah, I didn't write that, Cecil wrote that. So how'd you feel about him writing that you're not bangable? Well, I mean, we both know it's the truth. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no shame there. And, you know, manipulation or not, I don't really think G4 TV kind of fits in the current social media environment, at least not on YouTube. I've heard that on Twitch they're doing better. So I don't know. The The demographic, their demographic is tweens and maybe young teenagers, but there's a lot of competition for those eyeballs. <laughs> these guys, these guys, like, yeah, this doesn't sound as good. Like, they, 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 uh, they wrote this out, and when you when you write things out and you read it, you're like, oh, this sounds awesome. I know this is going to get a, a, either a laugh or it's going to get some applause. And what the two guys are thinking, I think they're hearing her say this, that, you know, keep in mind, they all approved this beforehand, if, if not, in fact, they didn't write it themselves. But they're hearing this said, and like the thought bubble over their head, their head is like, this isn't going as planned. But what do we do? We can't stop her. We can't cut her off. It's like, it's a, it's a three and a half minute rant. You can't just cut her off. There's nothing you can do. You just got to ride it out. It's like, this is not sounding as cool as it did when we wrote this thing out. Anyway, uh, they wanted Frosty G4. They wanted attention because, you know, they got a boost from a nostalgia vibe, but they got to they gotta earn it by, by producing some kind of entertainment. Um, so, so they got their attention by calling the viewers sexist. So Frosk, because uh, she made a few mistakes, she was talking about some games and stuff, and she made a few uh, mis some things that were objectively wrong, and then some some things that people just disagreed with, and they let her know. And the thing is, she's she's unattractive, and she's got weird body language, and she's like the like the way the way you dress, kind of you know, you're on camera, you want to really fake honest enthusiasm. I don't do it at all, as you can tell. I'm I'm kind of more in the nerkish camp of just being honest, um, which doesn't always work. But what the hell. You gotta if you're doing this kind of stuff where there's money involved, you gotta fake honest enthusiasm for the whole ninety minute show. And a lot of that is gonna be involved with clothing and how you present yourself in body language. And even the fact that and I I know if they're not gonna hear this, but if they did, like, you're complaining about the way she's dressed. She's wearing a hoodie and a sweatshirt, and then she's wearing a like a heavy shirt over it. Is it freezing cold in there, or you just want to hide and cover up as much as possible? These are minor, minor little. It's like evaluating a jury or something. Minor little body language tells, but you're selling yourself. You better put a big. You better have wardrobe dress you as friend, friendly as possible. Put a big fake smile on your voice, in, on your face. Have a good lilt in your voice, and sell the show for a good time. You're selling a distraction. This is a bizarre, like everything adds up to being um, not interested. Like this, somebody's body language is just, I'm not interested. I'm hostile. I'm aggressive. I'm in a bad mood. Today is not the day to try to strike up a chat with me. It's like, well, that's a problem because you're on camera selling a show and you're doing everything you can to scare people away, which, you know, they successfully did. They got the sh They got, they lost like 6,000 subs. They brought it down to 492, but they also, they, before that they had a rate of increase. And so even though if they're stuck, they're not dropping anymore, but the rate of increases has stopped and it'll pick up, but it's like, Oh, Hey, that rant that cost us $296,000 over the next three years. So maybe that virtue signaling wasn't such a hot idea. But the thing is, when she made those mistakes, she was talking about some Sony games or something. Uh, it sh it wasn't it should not have been a big deal. She should just you should just let it go. Like most things on social media, you make a, a mistake, just let it go and move on past it. Uh, there's no sense in wasting time addressing it unless you think you can monetize it. Um, the thing is, she manipulated to try to get some more subs to the channel, or they all manipulated because they're all. I mean, she's not making these decisions by herself. 
and they temporarily lost subs. And I'm not sure if it backfired. Only time will tell. Like in six months from now, how is the channel going to be doing? What are the what what's the viewer? Uh, interaction going to be like and you know if uh, maybe twitch is a different environment though it doesn't seem it seems like twitch is if anything it's more geared towards girls in hot tubs where you just want something on in the background uh, some girl in a bikini while you're playing video game or you're playing guitar or something um so i don't see like this kind of content is for tweens I don't see it really selling on any platform, but, you know, I'm not a tween anymore, so I'm not really sure. The thing is, when they lose 6,000 subs, they view it as like, oh, we got rid of... The comics uh, and comics get kind of experiences, too. They go, oh, we, we, we got rid of the Chad Hugo Boss types. The money doesn't matter. We got rid of those, you know, those people. Except, like, you got rid of mostly just reasonable people who don't hate themselves. So, you know, you can straw man all you want, but the bottom line is that your black ink in the ledger is slowly turning into red ink. But they don't care. SJWs don't care about money. They care about propaganda. Uh, most of them don't have a religion. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a new religion to them. So they manipulated this, this event into being kind of a left-wing versus right-wing thing. Same thing happened to Star Wars in 2015. Are gamers sexist? If you believe even in the idea of sexism or the various other istophobicisms, and there's a whole... Um, uh, cultural, anthropological, I don't know what you want to call it, theory behind the creation of those words. It's kind of like a Scientologist globalist experiment where those words aren't real. They're created by globalist Marxists to manipulate people on a mass scale. The, the idea being you, you create these words, which, are, you know, keep in mind, have all been created in the past hundred years. And you, you use control of the media and platforms to establish them firmly in people's psychology, like a, a meme pathogen, which is a, you know that reference. <laughs> Definitely join the Telegram and Discord. Um, to manipulate people, and then once you have those shields firmly in place, you can commit the most reprehensible acts, like, you know, having children um, uh, dress up and dance around for the pleasure of uh, people. And all you have to do is raise these these shields that you created over the past hundred years. It's, you got to realize, like the people, these globalists you're dealing with, they're playing the long game. They're not they're not playing over a lifetime. They're playing over hundreds of years. They they're playing chess, and it's not that we're not capable of playing chess. Some of us very much are, not me, but we don't even know that we're playing a game and we're being played, and we're not even sitting at the table. Anyway. Both male and female gamers make sex-based derogatory comments. <laughs> Welcome to the internet. Female gamers are probably, in my experience, more sexist than males. So actually, Frost's comments were misandrous because male gamers are the victims of misandrous comments online. Male gamers are the marginalized, oppressed, and disenfranchised victims. Their voices must be heard. Uh, if you know who, who else will stand up for male gamers? So if they got like 492,000 subs on G4, um, if kids enjoy watching who, these Sessler and, I don't know, Frosk and all these other idiots, um, I, I guess the kids probably hate themselves and maybe enjoy the, the abuse. But the thing with G4 is that anyone can cover games nowadays, and there's a ton of competition for eyeballs just on YouTube and Odyssey. And the thing with Odyssey is it's a, it's a growing community across all platforms, but it has a growing video game community for some reason. Maybe because it's um, it's a live streaming thing. You maybe you can use Odyssey and Discord and play play games live. I I'm not that much into video games, um, but the thing is with the videos, you've got to offer something. It got to be entertainment or information, or you know simply at the base level, hot chicks in tight clothing. If if you give me one hot chick in tight tight clothing, I guarantee you I can. I mean anyone could build a successful show over having one cute girl who can fake honest enthusiasm for 90 minutes like that's that's the base level programming uh, if, if you have a, an ugly guy who's making a show and successfully you know uh, you know credit to ethan for being you know not a hot chick and uh, having to have you know that's the credit to guys in general on on social media is that they have to get by on their wits where you've got uh, hot chicks like they are already have a boost up and i will say to be fair there's are some hot chicks in cg who are legitimately talented but then you have chicks like this who are not hot chicks, but they're not talented and they're not they're not funny, they're not informative. They're just angry and bitter, which is a weird sell. Anyway, this has gone on long enough, already 14 minutes. A like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys all next episode.